Hadrian Split are a six-time winner of the Croatian top flight. However, they haven't won a title in the last 17 seasons. Yes, it is our time today to rebuild the team from Split in Croatia, which is conveniently just after I've come back from a vacation there. We are trying to rebuild this club back to the top. Now, if you take a look, they're actually a very good team in Croatia regardless. We've got some interesting competitions that we're part of. We're part of the Conference League in season number one. But I will say, if we go and take a look at the past winners of this division, the Croatian League has been dominated, and I mean dominated, by one team, really, over the past 20 years, and that is Dinamo Zagreb. Now, obviously, there are some famous alumni from that particular club. Obviously, uh, they are very, very good. It's our turn to overturn this. As you can see, Hadjik were the runners-up in the 21-22 season. Uh, so it's our goal to basically take over Dinamo Zagreb and see where we can take this club in the next five seasons. You know what we do in season number one? We never sign any players in that first transfer window. But we do need a good tactic to pull this team along. And I'm using someone different's tactic today. We're using my good friend Murph FM's tactic. This is his ultimate 4-2-3-1 tactic. I will flash up the thumbnail now so you know what it looks like. I will also leave a link to Murph and his tactic video down in the description. So please do and go and check that out because we're going to use it for five seasons. This is the first time I've used a tactic that's not either mine or GYR's in any of these rebuilds. Uh, so massive shout out to Murph. Please do go and check out his tactic. The team's looking pretty good. Oh, we've got some really good creative players up front. I will say Marco is uh, one of our top star players. 28 years of age. Yeah, 14 caps for the Croatian national team as well. Nikola uh, Kalinic is another good player for us, but he is 34 years of age. High teamwork, high off the ball and stuff like that. He's a very good player. So moving forward, we're quite good defensively. We're a bit ropey. Uh, our best defender is this guy who is on loan from a team in uh, Portugal, despite being Croatian. Obviously, he's a former Dinamo Zagreb, a youth prospect as well. Um, but we want to kind of take over our own players. We've got really decent facilities as well. 13 training facilities, 14 youth facilities, 19 for junior coaching and 16 for youth recruitment. I kind of want to max those out as much as I can throughout the course of this save. So we will be trying to use some of our funds there in terms of the competitions though these are the four competitions that we're in we are in the super cup as well uh, we also have the uh croatian cup which uh split did win the season prior uh, we are current holders of that cup and uh oops there we go jumped a bit too forward we are in the europa conference league as well we enter in the third qualifying pass so there's two rounds for us to get through before we get into the europa conference league proper um so we're gonna have to see what happens in that one and then if we go over to the croatian league as you can see zagreb winning the last five seasons if we go into the season preview they are one to five favorites to get the job done yet again we've got a couple players in the media dream 11 but there are players in here that you would have heard of obviously the satalos they are very very good obviously croatia's goalkeeper from the world cup who pulled off those penalty heroics dominic livakovic is at dinamo zagreb as well um so they've got some really really good talent um the rest of the league not necessarily going to get very close i wouldn't have thought um it's probably going to be between ourselves and dinamo zagreb but as you can see the croatian league is currently two below the sky bet championship so lots of work to do here in croatia and i'm looking forward to doing it let's get season one done and dusted <laughs> Like this tactic from Murph FM is pretty darn good as we've managed to win the Croatian League in season number one. Absolutely annihilated the competition as well, I must add. 90 points. Dinamo Zagreb actually got 74 coming in second, so we've absolutely blitzed them, winning it by 16 points. That is probably largely down to the fact that we did go out of European competition. I did say we went into that third qualifying round of the Conference League where we took on Slavia Prague and they beat us 5-4 on aggregate, scoring the three goals really, really quickly in this uh in this first half of the second leg we had a lot to do and we kind of basically couldn't do it uh, we got to the quarterfinals of the serbian uh, serbian of the croatian cup as well uh annoyingly we go out as the only away team to go out there luckily we went out to a team in our division but uh alas 
losing control of that cup. We did win the Super Cup at the start of the season. Four goals to two against Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, relatively comfortable in this particular fixture as well. We were uh, kind of on par with them, but we managed to score our chances past Livakovic. They unfortunately did not score their chances past our goalkeeper. So we do qualify for the Champions League moving into season number two, which is really, really nice. Uh, but unfortunately, the financial rewards have not really come for us here. We've got 170k in transfer budget. Uh, we've got around, what's that, 26 grand a week in terms of wage budget. Now, don't get me wrong, the players aren't on a huge wage over here in Croatia. Our top earner is on just under 20k for our best player. But that disparity between him and actually the rest of the squad is quite huge. So we're going to have to see what we can go and do for season number two. Obviously, going into that Champions League qualification phase hopefully we can bring in some nice new faces to bolster this team so guys transfers for season number two are pretty few and far between we've only signed one player for 250k i felt like we needed to improve in that striker position i did touch on the striker who was there previously a bit more on the older side so we've gone out and signed a bolivian international yes not exactly the two nations that you would see coming together a lot here croatia and bolivia but we've signed a bolivian bolivian international 14 caps two goals for bolivia he comes in for 250k as I said very well rounded not the elite tier strikers that you're probably used to seeing in some rebuilds but he is very good I think he's well rounded has all the attributes in the key areas that I look for in a striker so I'm hoping he is the man to fire us to glory this season if we take a look uh, uh, with the starting 11 I'm going to pin him as that starting striker because if I, if I quick fit without restriction sometimes it moves a couple of players around and I, I would want Livija Livija is that how you say this guy guy's name i would want him in a more creative position i kind of want him in this attacking midfield position i think he's much better suited there however he is currently wanted by brentford and crystal palace so sometimes when england come calling uh you need to make those amendments i will give a massive shout out this to this guy as well ferrero he looks like a very good player a former benfica player by the looks of things but yeah he is very very good despite being on the slightly slower side with that 10 pace uh so the team's looking pretty solid i think it's slightly better than it was last season uh, so we are moving in the right direction in terms of the competitions as the league winner we will take on Dinamo Zagreb they were the cup winner so that one will be happening there uh, which is really really nice to see you can see it doesn't happen on the same years when the league and the cup is won by the same team so that's quite interesting uh, it's not like in England where you actually play somebody else if the league and cup is won by the same team the competition just doesn't exist which is quite cool we do have obviously the, uh, the cup as well we are expected to reach the semi-finals of that one uh, and the board wants us to qualify for the Europa Conference League via the leagues they want us to finish second despite winning it last year this league has actually taken a little bit of a nosedive obviously we are pretty poor in continental competition ourselves but uh yeah, we move forward. Uh, Dominic Livakovic is still here. Uh, Brucerina is a uh, Bacharina is still here at uh, Dinamo Zagreb as well. So he's a very, very good player if you've not seen him this year. So they're still managing to hold on to some of their stars as well. They've still got Sotalo. So they are odds on favorites to win the title yet again. Eight, uh, eight to three, uh, I can't even talk. Eight to 13 to win the title. So they are odds on favorites. We are four to one. Uh, uh, so hopefully we do at least come in second. I'd love to win the title again. Obviously winning the league last season is uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a prerequisite at the very least at this point. And we do go into the Champions League. We do have to qualify. We are going to be in the second qualifying round against the team from Cyprus. So we're going to have to see if we can get into the Champions League proper or if we drop down into some of these other competitions. Let's do season two. Okay, so season number two is a remarkable improvement. Not only have we won the league on games against our opposition. Yes, we finished level on points with Dinamo Zagreb. We managed to beat them in our actual head-to-head. -head. We got into the Champions League proper. We got dispatched in the group stage. We'll talk about that in just a second. But we also managed to win the Cup and the Super Cup. So by winning the league and the Super uh, League and the Cup, the Super Cup will not take place next season. But we won the Super Cup on penalties against Dinamo Zagreb. No penalties heroics here for uh, Dominic Livakovic. He did get player of the match with an 8.4 rating as well because we absolutely annihilated them in the match uh, but they had two players missing their penalties decisively to see us lift the Super Cup. In terms of the Croatian Cup, we actually got to the final again. We didn't take on uh, Zagreb like I would have expected uh, which kind of led to a little bit of a one-sided final. We win that one four goals to two. Uh, Bruno Melanda, our, our new signing, scored two goals in that Cup final which is really, really lovely to see. Uh, 
uh, but we kind of run out very comfortable winners uh, we had 30 shots to the opposition seven so that kind of goes to show how dominant we were in that particular final winning the league is really really nice much more closely fought out than it was last season but winning on that head-to-head -head is massive meaning we go into the champions league again next season dinamo zagreb actually finishing second do go into the europa league next year and then the teams in third and fourth go into the europa conference league but let's talk about our champions league because when i left you at the start of season number two we had to qualify past the team from Cyprus. We uh, beat them at home three goals to two, and then we drew 3-3 away from home. We then took on HJK, beating them at home 3-0. Losing to them away seems to be a bit of a trend here. We then drew with Galatasaray away in that final playoff game, and we won the game at home three goals to two to push ourselves into the Champions League, into Group D, where we only picked up three points, as you can see on your screen. We had Chelsea, PSG, and Young Boys. We only managed to beat Young Boys at home, losing every other game, but actually being in the Champions League is a massive improvement for this team who couldn't even make the Conference League last season. So I'm really, really happy with it. And with some of that happiness comes in the Champions League money. We are now in a positive overall balance. Uh, if we go into our debts and loans, we don't have any debts or loans, which is fantastic. We've got 7.2 million pounds in the transfer budget now and around 35 grand a week in terms of our wage budget to really step this team up. And I think this is where we're going to go really to the next level in terms of some of these continental competitions. I'd be very surprised if Dinamo Zagreb managed to get their hands on anything domestic from here on out but i might be proved wrong let's see who we can bring in for season number three so guys transfer update for season number three and we've been and spent some money and we've managed to bring in some really really good talent i'm really happy with some of the players that we've managed to bring in my biggest steal of the transfer market is this guy dominic grief he's a slovakian goalkeeper looks pretty good Better than what we did have, because what we did have was really, really old. Our goalkeeper last season was 33, 34, something like that. So he comes in, 27 years of age. Nice high bravery, which I really like. Good jump in reach as well, the fact that he's six foot six. Looks like a very well-rounded goalkeeper. And we got him for an absolute steal from Mallorca for 115k, which is a massive W. We also picked up Tepsic, uh, is how I'm saying this guy's name, as a centre-back for us. Can also play in the defensive midfield position uh, from one of our rivals in the division for two million quid we also picked up Z uh, zapier zapier uh, he comes in as another central mi defense midfield option in this uh, tactic supremely well-rounded 25 years of age capped by the croatian youth team but not actually capped by the full team yet so maybe by playing for us he can get that appearance and someone who has appeared for croatia is this guy marco rog Rog uh, is how I'm going to butcher this guy's name, I'm sure. Uh, 21 caps for the Croatian national team, trying to get into a midfield with Brozovic, Modric and stuff like that. I think he's done very well. So he came in on a free transfer, having been released from Cagliari in uh, in Italy. Much more as a squad player, but definitely a good squad player to have at the very least. If we go and quick pick without restriction, our best 11, this is how the team is looking right here right now uh, Miranda massive shout out to him had a very good season for us last year got 29 goals in all competitions after his 250k move uh, really impressed with him uh, and with the additions that we've made to this team I think we are ready to really have a run at the Champions League if we go and take a look at the competitions obviously because we won the league and the cup last season no super cup it's basically ours but you don't get awarded the trophy, but there's no need for the game to be played. The board wants us to get to the quarterfinals in the, uh, in the I keep saying Serbian Cup, in the Croatian Cup, ladies and gents. Uh, and we are expected to uh, qualify for the Europa League via the league. So they want us to finish second again, despite winning the league the last two seasons. Zagreb are still the favourites to win the title, uh, but we are slowly improving. We are closing those odds despite winning the league left, right and centre. Uh, we are slowly becoming a more favored team uh we are still predicted to finish in second with 13 to 5 odds we are still the second favorite by a decent margin we've overtaken the championship and all of that good stuff now in terms of the competition ranking we are just behind the belgian league so hopefully that can continue to rise with our champions league performance we enter in that second qualifying round again hopefully we can make it all the way to the champions league because this is season three this is going to be the league phase so let's see what happens let's see if we can get into the champions league yet again So 
so season three is in the books and we have another league and another cup double now i will say we are winning the league but especially this season and the season prior winning on head to head is not the way i want to do it this time we finish on head to head joint on 77 points uh with re re Rika? I assume you don't say the J. Uh, so not even Dinamo Zagreb finished in second. They've dropped down to third now. We finish on a two-way tie, but our head-to-head -head record means that we win the title for a third consecutive year, which you absolutely love to see. We also win the cup as well on penalties this time around, uh, meaning we've won it technically three years in a row uh, with a player missing a penalty in normal time. But he uh, stepped up and scored in the shootout, and that's all that really matters when it comes down to it at the end of the day. Another goalkeeper in a cup final getting an over an eight rating uh, going to show that this is quite a good tactic from Mr. Murph FM. Uh, in terms of the Champions League, yeah, we got knocked out in the playoff round by Aston Villa. Yes, Villa are in the Champions League and they are doing very, very well. They've got my guy, Maxi Gomez. I love Maxi Gomez. Leon Bailey, a good player. Wendia they still have, uh, but they beat us 6-3 on aggregates, which is a fair play to, uh, to Aston Villa, who, if memory serves, got it all the way to the final. They rode it all the way to the final where they took on Real Madrid, uh, didn't perform in that final. Vinny, Ben White and Camavinga, of course, Ben White is uh, is over at Real Madrid because why wouldn't he be? Why wouldn't he be? Uh, in terms of our other Champions League exploits though, let's show you those because I know people will be interested in terms of some of these Champions League performances. The first team that we took on, a team from Luxembourg, they are semi-professional. We beat them 13-0 in the first leg and then 10-1 in the second leg. Pretty good convincing we took on shamrock rovers then from ireland we beat them 4-0 at home 4-2 away from home comfortable at this point we then took on luda in the champions playoff uh, we beat them 2-1 uh, at home and then 4-2 on the road relatively comfortable progress i would say into the champions league proper uh, where we took on in the group phase we took on basel in the champions league we beat them 1-0 we lost to ac milan in the san siro Beat Liverpool at home. Yes, we beat Liverpool at home thanks to two goals from Philip uh, Kronovic is how I'm going to say that guy's name uh, with Mo Salah scoring the other goal. We got absolutely pumped by Barca in the new Camp. It's kind of what you would expect. Uh, lost to Galatasaray at home. Beat Lazio at home. Uh, lost to Bayern Munich at home. And then beat RB Leipzig away. Sorry, other way around. Lost to Bayern away. Beat Leipzig at home. Then, yeah, come up against Villa of all teams in that knockout round. But the extra Champions League games, the extra money is looking rather darn tasty. If you look at our transfer budget, guys, we've got £15.2 million and our wage budget is massively increased. That is almost by around 70 grand a week just by being in the Champions League. It makes such a damn difference in this game. Um, because of that, though, we are going to start to work on some of these things off the field. Our junior coaching is now up to 20. Youth recruitment is now at 17 and the training facilities are at 14s. But if I go into my club vision, have we requested it yet? It's already gone up one level. As soon as I can request it again, we will keep requesting using this Champions League money for the better good of this club. Let's get into season number four, spending some of that cash. Transfer update for season number four then, and we spent 14 and a half million pounds out there in the market, bringing in some very good players. And I think this is really going to take us to the next level, especially on a defensive end. Uh, Berg Jonsson comes in from Randers for 3.8 million pounds, a really, really good central defensive midfielder, supremely good mentally, very good physically. 25 years of age, no caps for the Norway in uh, a national team at the top tier, but 3.8 million, I feel like that's a very good investment. Mika Marmol is a defender who can play as a natural at left back and at centre back, 24 years of age. He came in from AC Milan for a little bit of a snip as well, 3.3 million pounds for him uh, martin vitic comes in the uh, czech republic international he is very good six foot four 22 years of age um 19 determination so you know he's pretty good there a uh, very determined little player he is very good in terms of all of the things you would look for in a good defender he came in for 4.5 million pounds sufna is another player who is a regular in some of these rebuilds he comes in from thailand a thailand international 52 caps for the national side 38 goals for him he is just a goal scorer that is all he is he's not very good at much else but he is a very clinical goal scorer aged only 22 uh, really hoping he can really take us to the next level and we've signed another goalkeeper uh, because a lot of a lot of teams are sniffing around our current goalkeeper uh grief the player that we spoke about last season uh so we signed this guy uh plizari he came in from um 
Uh, Pescara, yes, for two million. I couldn't remember which Italian team it was. He comes in from Pescara for two mil, uh, just as another good option for us. Because if we quick pick with that restriction, our best 11, uh, he does not make it into the team. Grief is still there, but he's had a lot of interest in him. Uh, I also think with the additional of Marmo and Vitic, our defense is now next level. We are really, really good now. And uh, these two, uh, uh, Tapsic alongside Zepia, they are both kind of defensive minded. I mean, Zepia is a little bit more creative, but these two as defensive midfielders is basically having two centre backs in front of two centre backs. Um, so defensively should be very strong to allow these four up front to really, really rip our opposition apart. If we go into the competitions, of course, we have the cup, obviously the Croatian cup. They want us to finish in the semi-finals at the very least. I want to win it again. The board this time, though, they do want us to qualify for the Champions League via the league placement and if we go into the season preview dinamo zagreb now are still the favorites but it's much much closer than it was at the start obviously we've played three seasons already we've won the league every single time so they still not put in the respect on our name but if you notice dominic livakovic is gone he is no longer in the league uh, i assume he has departed in this summer window or at some point yeah he went to real betis for seven million quid but look at the money they are making as a club that is ludicrous money those top three, four signings are unbelievable money. Fair play. Fair play to the teams in Croatia, man. They produce some unbelievable talents. Um, so we are the second favourites to win the league, but I want to win the league again. No real surprise there. Champions League, this time we enter in the third qualifying round. We've progressed through a qualifying round this time. Only two matches or two ties to play to get into the Champions League proper. Let's see what we can do. Season number four. So season four is done and dusted. It's another league and cup double. I'm not going to beat around the bush. The Champions League money makes this far too easy domestically. We had the same thing with Red Star when we were over in Serbia. It kind of was the same thing domestically. Nobody could really touch us because we just had that Champions League funds coming in. We got to the round of 16 this time uh, where we were knocked out by English opposition yet again in the Champions League. We were knocked out by Manchester United this time. We lose 6-2 on aggregate, uh, losing that second leg five goals to nil. Bruno Fernandes with the hat-trick. Um, yeah, we're not as good as United. That's not really a surprise. But uh, Champions League performance, very solid nonetheless. In terms of the other cups, though, we got to the final and won the uh, the Croatian Cup yet again. Uh, four different goal scorers there kind of going to show that we are a very good side, uh, as kind of everyone would expect. And this time in terms of the league, we win it on our own accord. We qualify. We win, we win first place. Uh, 74 points for us. Uh, winning the league by seven points is absolutely massive. Dominated the goal difference. Uh, and Dinamo Zagreb, because of our exploits in some of these other continental competitions um you can kind of see that we're really improving that coefficient so both ourselves and dinamo zagreb go into the champions league this time one team into the europa league and two teams into the europa conference league which you absolutely love to see we are trying to improve croatia whilst we are here as well um so we've done really really well there let's talk about the champions league run uh, once we get in there we take on red star we beat them 4-0 on aggregate absolutely crushing them winning them 1-0 winning 1-0 in belgrade before beating them 3-0 at home then we take on bodo glimpse a 1-1 draw away is a relatively solid result and then we beat them at home three goals to nil you absolutely love to see it meaning we get into the champions league proper where we beat sc utrecht you lose to young boys uh, draw with barcelona beat arsenal 1-0, 91st minute winner there. We beat Real Betis as well. Uh, we beat Spurs as well, so dominating the English sides. Lose 5-0 to Real Madrid. Lose 3-2 to Ajax. In the, round, uh, the knockout round, we beat Stuttgart, so two goals to nil in both legs there, winning that one. So we went a step further than last season uh, where we come up against Manchester United. We beat them 2-1 at home, Marcus Rashford getting the goal there. And uh, Gerald Tavara is a, a signing that we did in the January. Uh, another central midfielder, much more creative this one. Uh, he scored uh, both goals there. Uh, but yeah, United beating us at Old Trafford. No huge surprises in that particular one. Um, off the field though, we are improving things still we've now got 20s for the youth recruitment and the junior coaching which you absolutely do love to see and we are working on improving the training facilities and the youth facilities here that will be done within the next two months finances wise we got 40 million in the overall balance and 26 million 26.2 million to spend going into the last season i don't even know how i'm gonna spend that to be honest i will try my best i'm sure i'll find an absolute gem out there somewhere 
So some quick transfers to update you on from last season. It was a mid-season transfer and I completely forgot to talk to you about them. Dominic Grief left the club. I told you he was wanted. He left the club for Porto, our old goalkeeper. He left in January for £5.5 .5 million. It could rise to £6 million. We also signed a couple of new gens, I will say. Emmanuel Hassan comes in, uh, a Belgian youth player. He looks quite good for his age, only 18 years of age. Could improve a decent amount. He comes in from Kano Pillars. I don't even know where where they are they're in nigeria so shout out to him he came in from nigeria you absolutely love to see it we also signed thomas rivas as well young argentinian it seems like i can just find center backs at the moment um but the wonder kid filter if you've not seen it go check out the wonder kid filter um it's in my discord come in there's a channel video resources it's pinned in there uh helps you find players like this and then the last one that we have to talk about is gu chen he looks very good coming out of china it's not very often you see chinese new gens but he's got nine caps to china three goals as well he's been playing three key positions for us and he's fast guys 17 acceleration 15 pace he's got high determination high teamwork nice finishing as well could be a good player for us moving forward in terms of the season five signings, we've had a couple players depart for a couple of fees, as you can see here, the top two on the right hand side of your screen. But we've been out and we spent some money again. Zakaria Taylor comes in from Portugal. A Ghanaian youth international, 19 years of age. Electric, this guy. Really good physically. Nice high determination. Really good work rate. Has all the things you need for him to be a good defender. I don't think he's ready to be a centre-back for us just yet. But he's going to play at the right-back position. And it's very rare that you see new gens with very strong both feet. Uh, so I think he can be an absolute danger in a couple of years time but i'm gonna play him right off the rip we also picked up this guy mohammed uh, uh, ali ben uh, roman rom romdane uh, as a new defense midfielder option supremely well rounded the tunis in the international i should probably know his name uh 26 years of age six foot one perfectionist personality uh looks like a superb player to have in this team and then the last guy the most expensive guy in the team is Bartol Barisic um he is a former Dinamo Zagreb player only played 13 times for them but has come back to Croatia to kind of dominate now what I love about this guy physically he's pretty well rounded nice high strength and natural fitness his mentals are what sets him apart in my opinion 16 anticipation along with the 14 composure 16 off the ball with 15 finishing yeah this guy is gonna be a absolute bags man he's been out on loan the last two seasons Porto not fancying him evidently he was at Zagreb at the start of this save uh, but he is now back in Croatia ready to tear things up with split we pay 14 million pounds for him uh, to round off our Croatian contingent and actually uh, uh, kind of have some domestic players in this team if we quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is how the team is looking going into the final season we're basically playing four center backs at the back which you absolutely love to see Plazari is now a new goalkeeper he had a very good second half of the season last year um, so we were, were rocking this really nicely we've got lots of homegrown talent in here what's that one two three four five homegrown players in this start and 11 still as you love to see it uh moving into this fifth and final season obviously we do have the same three competitions as well the board wants us to get to the semi-finals in the croatian cup they are expecting us to now win the league in season five if we go and have a look at the season preview we are the favorites to win the league finally uh, we've got lots of players in the media dream 11 as well uh, although i will say the whole back line is dinamo zagreb so maybe they're going to go and have a very good year they are second favorites to win the league six to four so uh we will see what happens when we've progressed even further we go into the champions playoff in the champions league so one tie to win to get us into the champions league proper let's see if we can do it So season number five and our best season so far, in my opinion, we win the league comfortably almost by 20 points. We comfortably win the cup as well. So basically we've dominated this cup the whole time that we've been in Croatia. This time winning the final four goals to near Bartal Barisic with two goals in that final. You love to see it from our new striker. Um, it's not fair at this point it's not the opposition had five shots zero on target uh we scored three of our own and one own goal um it's just not fair at this point the uh, the croatian cup is now the ninth best trophy uh, domestic cup in europe which is uh really really nice to see and in terms of the league we've absolutely dominated yet again we are now the ninth best league in the con uh, in the country in the continent uh, we are just behind the danish super league uh, and not a million miles away genuinely from the eredivisie and the portuguese league as you can see we are up here in ninth we were in 16th it's really improving we're on the same sort of star rating as these three here um so with another season i would kind of expect us to bypass that 
We got to the round of 16 in the Champions League yet again. Uh, this time coming up against the buzzsaw that is Real Madrid. Um, they won 5-0 on aggregate. We didn't really have a chance here. The difference between us and Madrid is basically like the difference between us in Croatia and everybody else. Um, the difference is absolutely staggering. They signed players like Lavia, Pedro Neto's there, Goncalo Ramos is there, Inacio's there, Max Ahrens, uh, Mikel Moreno. They've got a really good team, guys, is uh, of Real Madrid and Vinicius Jr. And of course, Ben White again on the goals. You absolutely love to see it. But our Champions League run, for the most part, we did qualify again. It's no real surprise. We are quite a good team. We took on Olympiacos. We beat them 6-0 on aggregate. Comfortable. Going into the league phase where we absolutely hammered it. Genuinely, we really really did smash it as you can see we finished in sixth overall uh six victories and two defeats plus uh 20 goals scored nine goals conceded um in terms of some of those games we took on Lugano, which is a team from switzerland we beat them 2-0 lost 4-0 in germany to eintracht frankfurt beat liverpool at home liverpool do not like coming to croatia it would seem uh lost 2-0 in monaco beat maccabi tel aviv 6-0 beat rb salzburg 7-2 Beat Barcelona 1-0 in the new Camp. I can only assume this was a smash and grab. It kind of was. They did dominate that game, but we win and get the three points. Then we beat Real Sociedad in Spain as well. And for our troubles and for finishing so high up, who do we get? Real Madrid. Disappointing. We lose 3-0 away at uh, the Bernabeu and then 2-0 at home. Uh, as I said, the disparity is pretty darn massive. If you wanted to pick up this save, you can do. Links to it are down in my Discord. I'll post it there ASAP. You've got £18.2 million pounds and around 200k in wage budget to spend if you did want to take this team to the next level. And I do have to give a massive shout out. Look at all the potential in this youth development center. And I've basically done nothing with it other than try and improve it. The facilities are now 18, 18, 20, 20. Uh, so this is a fantastic club if you did want to take on this challenge and push it to the next level and maybe ultimately win them a Champions League. If you do like the rebuild content though, guys, check out this playlist popping up right here. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on FM23 so far.